Right, ladies and gentlemen, uh, welcome back to the Vodacom Manual Indoor Sports Centre in Johannesburg, South Africa. 2021 Commonwealth Games, 3x3 wheelchair basketball qualifiers, and the first of our women's matches. She's the team from South Africa taking on the team from Kenya. Let's welcome to the floor from Kenya. Player number eight, Rahel Alar. Number 10, Caroline Wanjira. Number five, Yunus Otieno. Number six, Mary Zakayo. And for the home team, put your hands together. Let's welcome number four, Aviwe Ngoni. Number six, Sam Kalisiwe Ibatha. Captain, number nine, Michelle Mofaneri. And uh, number 10, Kalibokile Moen. All right, welcome back to the Mandeville Indoor Sports Centre here in Johannesburg. Um, joining me in the commentary for this game between South Africa women and uh, Kenya women, I have, I'm delighted to welcome RWBF Africa President, Mr. Charles Saunders. Welcome, Charles. Thank you very much, Jerry. What, a, what an absolute pleasure. Look at this. We have got 3x3 basketball up and running in Africa. What a pleasure. A lot of hard work's gone into the preparation of this uh, particular event, uh, Charles. Uh, obviously, quite a new discipline. Um, we, we, we've had a couple of trial runs over the past few years uh, trying to fine-tune the, the, the way the game's going to be played. Um, I'm sure you must be quite delighted to, to eventually be up and running in this particular event. Well, absolutely. I mean, this is a six-year project that we've been working on. And, um, uh, you know, congratulations to IWBF World in, in, in getting it up and going. I think it's a wonderful initiative that we have got the Commonwealth Games uh, that will be coming up uh, in Birmingham next year. And what's great about this is that we are the first of the series as the African continent uh, to launch the National Series. So I'm very, very pleased about it, very proud. And thank you very much for everybody that's put contribution to make this thing happen. That's right, some early, some early nerves here from both teams. A couple of turnovers. Uh, the Kenyan ladies are uh, look look quite uh, quite useful there uh, Charles, some, some big tall players versus a relatively small South African contingent but uh, South African players uh, got some quick players so it'll be interesting to see which uh, which of the two disciplines uh, actually uh, uh, comes out on top. Yeah look I think right now it's early days with a lot of it um, this is really the first time that they're in competition against each other in the 3x3 format uh, within the five-man game, of course, they've challenged each other on a number of occasions. And Kenya has been one of the um, forerunners on the east coast of Africa uh, in leading wheelchair basketball. So I'm really, really chuffed that we're able to get the ladies out here. And you know what? What a fitting, beautiful end to actually something that's taken six years to put together. I, I really am so chuffed at what's happening. I think it need, need um, a, a special... Uh, a special mention to uh, to the RWBF Africa uh, panel, uh, sorry, the Executive Council for the great work that's uh, been put in over the last 18 months to, to, to actually get some new countries involved. I mean, countries like Gambia, Rwanda, um, Namibia. Yeah, absolutely. To the fray and, um, you know, uh, uh, that's off to RWBF Africa for 
for all the work that's going on to, to get these countries playing. Yeah, absolutely, Jerry. You know, we started um, as a new executive uh, in, in, in late, uh, or should I say early 2020. Uh, we've only been really 18 months in the running. And um, the whole idea behind the program that we put together was development, development, development. And what we wanted to do at the end of the day was to make sure that uh, we get all of our sister companies and our brother com uh, countries uh, in Africa involved in wheelchair basketball. It's been a long haul and I have to say congratulations to, to my committee for what they've actually done and the work that they've done in the background to ensure that we've got new membership coming through it. We're up to 16 countries now. We aim to finish off at the end of the year with 25. Uh, it's a slow process. And um, of course, we're going there. We're going to be there. And by next year, um, I'm looking at around about 30 countries in Africa that will be running a wheelchair basketball. So we, we're on our way. It's, it's not an easy program, as I said. It's, uh, communication is, is difficult in Africa. But the ways that we've gone about it is we've broken up into five regions. And hopefully those five regions and the management that are put into those five regions will actually continue to work to achieve what we're trying to achieve. I mean, look at it for today. Gambia is the newest country that is in. And, and with the, the, their acceptance to wheelchair basketball was Friday last week. Oh, that's incredible. And, and um, I must say I was pleasantly surprised. They, they seem to have some good basic fundamentals there. So, you know, it, it, hopefully it won't be, be long before... Um, you know, the African continent will start uh, competing, you know, the, with more teams at uh, world competition. Still a lot of work to do, we, we acknowledge that, but uh, it's exciting to, to see the potential. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, uh, basics and fundamentals still need to be taught, and the launch of the coaching program, which we're looking forward to getting off the ground uh, uh, before the under-23 tournament uh, takes place in December, uh, is going to go a long way to ensuring that the basic disciplines, the fundamentals of playing the game, how to dribble, how to push a chair, how to stop, how to trap a player, et cetera, et cetera, are gonna come into play. So I must say that a lot of good work has been done by the uh, appointed project development officer of IWBF, Mr. Gerard Smith. And what I can turn around and say is that uh, we will be launching within the next month all the online webinars for coaching programs, technical and classification programs. So it's one of the initiatives that we've put forward and uh, had it not been for COVID, I think we would have had this up and running a year ago. And uh, Charles, yeah, uh, obviously the, the build up to this uh, tournament, we've had uh, the opportunity to you know, uh, meet with all the, the, the countries and talk about potential development plans. And I mean, there's a lot of excitement around where things are going. So yeah, it's uh, good, good things ahead. And um, um, you know, obviously with the 3x3 version of the game, um, our plans, uh, our plans, the African plans are to, to have a, a tour around Africa. Um, obviously, we still, we still got a bit of uh, work to do on, on finalizing all of that. But yeah, again, opportunity to uh, develop the game and, and, and take it to the, to the kids. You know, we, 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 need, to, we need to look at uh, the youth development program. So, so this version of the game is an, an ideal opportunity for that. Oh, absolutely, yeah. You, you're absolutely correct in saying that. And of course, the initiative is what you're talking about, is to ensure that we've got regional games that are taking place. So in the five regions, we'll have playoffs and champions that will come through with the final leg of the 3x3 uh, ending up, um, hopefully hosted in the north or the south, the east or west, um, to be the championship of Africa so that the winning teams go through to the world championship. So that's the idea behind it. And um, yes, looking at 10 countries per region, it will make a very good competition uh, in the build-up to, to the African uh, uh, 3x3 uh, qualifiers. Currently a uh, timeout on, on court and uh, uh, South Africa hold a, a narrow lead but uh, look, look, uh, look quite comfortable uh, at this stage but uh, I'm sure Kenya will uh, keep, keep on uh, fighting through. We've still got plenty of time for them to do that. Um, uh, Charles also moving off the 3x3 version um, we have uh, another junior competition here in uh, being hosted by South Africa later this year um, how we how how are we looking in terms of the, the countries that have uh, attended because uh, historically we've uh, we've we've only had sort of uh, two or three countries that have been able to to attend uh, what what can you uh, update us on, on uh, that situation 
Well, once again, it's it's new. It's new. Uh, we call them NOWBs, which is your National Organising Wheelchair Basketball Federations, and um, we are proud to say that the likes of Libya will be present at one of these at this competition. So we're looking at six countries that will participate in the U23, uh, which will take place in December. Um, I'm very pleased to say that the growth of the, the under 23, which is really and truly the development program for wheelchair basketball, is growing. And uh, just the fact that uh, over the last, sure, 10, 12 years, we've only been able to bring in about three countries at a time. Uh, what a pleasure to have six countries competing at this level. And um, we've got a lot of work still to do in the north. Uh, that's where the powerhouse is. And um, it's a pity that we're not seeing the likes of Morocco and Algeria um, and Egypt that's going to participate at this level of competition. But what I can say is their loss and everybody else's gain. Um, and it's going to be a tough tournament. It really is going to be a tough tournament. And, and once again, hosted in South Africa. I just want to say through to the uh, Department of Sport and, and the Health Ministry for supporting us and able to, to be able to run these competitions under the COVID regulations. Hasn't been easy. It's been a very costly exercise. And of course, a big shout out to Sassel who have always been behind the Amawila boys and the Amawila girls uh, and have supported all the projects that we've put through uh, in not only here in South Africa, but in Africa. Um, but not forgetting that there are a lot of fringe sponsors out there that have supported wheelchair basketball over the years and the shout out must be given to them as well. And of course, one of the big brands of, of basketball, Super Sports, um, who have really and truly been with us now for 24 years. So it's really been a wonderful, wonderful achievement, a wonderful partnership, and it's been helping us to, to achieve what we've been able to achieve. So congratulations to everybody and thank you. Yes, uh, you know, obviously during uh, the COVID period there was a lot of uh, concern, but those, those uh, sponsors you mentioned definitely have kept us alive and uh, we're very grateful for that. Kenya get their first points on the board. South Africa, we need to be careful. Yeah, I think there's a little bit of urgency now in the South African team. You can see that uh, pushing, but at the same time as pushing, making little mistakes. Uh, what we can say is at the end of the day is that there's a three-way playoff, the best of three playoff between these two countries. And uh, the team that wins represents South Africa at the Commonwealth Games in Birmingham. Uh, yeah, the correction there that represents Africa, Mr. Saunders. Um, <laughs> represents so, Africa. Yeah, so just over five minutes to go. It's great to see that Kenya has come out so strong, and especially with, with some big girls. And they will definitely give the Algeria a run for their money, who are the current champions of, of Africa in the 5-on-5 five five game. Um, yeah, we'll see what happens. And uh, there's got another two games to prove who's going to be representing Africa. Um, Charles, uh, we, we chatted to uh, Luke Vergosen earlier. And um, just with regards to, the, obviously, the technical side of the game here, uh, uh, this game is also new to the, the officials. How's the, the development of uh, the technical side of things going in, in, in Africa? Well, we've been fairly lucky in that... Um, Many of our officials have been involved in the FIBA th uh, 3x3 games. So the, the mechanics and the calling um, from, the, from the, the able body side has been passed on into the wheelchair side. Um, the likes of uh, Luke Fokusen that's come out to South Africa now, who is the chairman of the competitions committee for uh, 3x3 World, um, and also an instructor in, in 3x3 um, um, technical. Um, has worked with, them, with these officials for the last two days, just basically changing them onto the principles of uh, wheelchair calling, um, which of course is, is, is a big difference from the able body in that, that they've got to concentrate on what we call crossing the path. Uh, the, the wheelchair is, is the, the player's legs and of course um, creates most of the contact situation. So in this format of game, uh, the crossover has been very, very easy. And uh, as you can see, Officials are handling the game. They're also there as a, as a development capacity, so they're teaching the players at the same time. And um, what I can say at the end of the day is that it's truly representative. Not only that, but have a look here. Two women referees in Africa refereeing the women's competition. Excellent. And two very strong 
referees that can handle themselves uh, more than uh, ma you know, matching up to, I mean, they referee in big, big men's competitions, not only for IWBF, but for FIBA themselves. Correct. Yeah, so it's, it's very nice that we've been able to get the officials that have done the crossover. It's, um, it's a project that we've been working on for also the last 18 months that have been launched again, as I said, uh, at the end of this month with, with all the officials. Although we've run a, a program over the last eight months with the officials identifying referees in Africa who wish to do the crossover to able, uh, from able body to, to wheelchair, great response. And it's going to be interesting to see what we have down at the 23s uh, when we're going to invite a couple of these referees to write their licenses, their zonal licenses, um, and see whether they can achieve and do the crossover from, from running basketball to wheelchair basketball. Good, uh, good defense there by uh, the South African girls. So turnover there. They'll pick up uh, possession. Just under five minutes to play. South African lead 4-1. Michelle <coughs> Mokinelli now in possession of the ball. Bounce killer Bokele Moeng. And she converts. So it's starting, it's starting to look like uh, so the South African ladies are finding their strides now. Making it difficult for Kenya. Good work by Moeng in defense. And uh, Charles, this, uh, the number nine for South Africa, uh, Mokinelli. New, new player that's just uh, come through the development ranks in South Africa. And uh, looks, looks like a good little player there. Yeah, look, I'm, I'm actually very impressed with the youth that's coming through at the moment. Um, we've seen a very, very big difference. Uh, our, our veteran ladies have carried us for the last couple of years, and it's great to see the number of youth players that are coming through the ranks. Um, this is one of them. And uh, she hasn't been around basketball for a long time, basically been a year. And, if, and she's already showing the fruits of what a national player should be like. So I'm looking forward to, to seeing a lot more of her. And... Uh She's uh, made a, an immediate impact uh, just uh, internally within the squad. You've got two veteran players on court in Ngoni and uh, Moeng, and uh, a unanimous uh, decision made by the team, and, and they made her the captain of the team. So it shows she's got leadership qualities. And, uh, Wonderful. Very, very awesome. exciting young, young uh, player here. Talking One to watch for the future, definitely. Talking well on the court as well and directing her troops, I think that's absolutely beautiful. All right, but don't, don't uh, write off Kenya. Kenya, this is their first, their first international game with um, the 3x3. And you know what? There's potential there. Absolutely, Charles. I mean, we were talking to, to Luke earlier, and um, you know, as we see in the uh, in the uh, able-bodied version of the 3x3, countries like Mongolia, you know, some that you wouldn't normally, you know, um, uh, rank with uh, with with uh, five and five basketball. Um, they, they, they're dominant in, in this version of the game. So, you know, the exciting opportunity for any of the African countries is to, you know, to t stake a claim to this, this version of the game. As we've seen, as we've seen in the likes of uh, rugby, uh, the rugby sevens, you know, Ke Kenya, yeah. Kenya are, are one of the top world's uh, nations. So, yeah, it's, it's, it's going to be exciting to see where this game goes. Absolutely. You know, when, when we took this initiative to uh, IWBF World some six years ago, and we, we put it on the grounds. The rules were a lot different. So I'm very pleased to see that, that we've adopted the FIBA 3 on, uh, 3x3 format. And um, uh, FIBA, of course, uh, being the, the brother federation to, to IWBF World or wheelchair basketball, um, both working out of the same offices, both with the same vision and the same direction. It's wonderful to see that we've been able to take the game and transform the game to this level within the number of years that we've been working on it. So great, great, great once again to everybody that's been involved, to those that have made it work, to Luke, who, who really and truly has worked tirelessly uh, on the international body uh, to, to make sure that this format of game is operative. And what is interesting about it is to see all the small countries that haven't been five on five um, characteristically playing within world competition, they're suddenly making effort on the big stage and it's wonderful to see this so I'm very chuffed about this and of course the hope is that you know these smaller these smaller nations uh, and I say smaller nations in the wheelchair basketball sense um, will, will develop develop the, the uh, 3x3 into you know taking part in 5 on 5 so it's a great great opportunity
Well, this is the development side of it. So that once the, although although if, if we look at what um, what FIBA has actually done now, uh, this has become a, a sport on its own, and there's professionals that play this sport only in comparison to the five and five game. Um, what is interesting about it is that with wheelchair basketball, we'd like to take this as the development sector for the five and five game. Um, these are all the fundamental skills that one has to learn through the three on three format. And what's interesting about it is that once they've mastered this and they grow this within their countries, the five on five structure will be a lot more easier to put together. Okay, can you, can you try to get some uh, late points here? So there we go, lead 10 1, and Gorni there unable to convert for South Africa. Caroline Wanjiri will have to kill the arc under pressure from Mopaneri. She tries to find uh, Rahel Alar unable to, and uh, Mawing will try and pick up the loose ball. And she clears the arc. Good work between Mawing and Mopaneri, and excellent play there by the South African team. Clock running down, two minutes 24. Uh, Wanjiri trying to trying to get uh, shot up there, doesn't drop for her. So uh, once once again, um, Jerry Dorso, I just want to just uh, a shout out to my executive, uh, who really and truly have done a huge amount of work in the background, uh, specifically with the new classification uh, case changes that have come about. Uh, there's been a lot of work in the background and, and a shout out must go to the classification department, um, to the project development and of course uh, through to my office that have really and truly worked tirelessly to all hours over the last uh, couple of days to get this up and running. Um, I, well can certainly, I can certainly vouch for the hours that have been going on. You know, we, we all know that tournaments are, are a lot of hard work but uh, yes, the, to all the staff, it, they, they've really been working 18, 18 to 19 hour days. So great effort and it's important that they they get acknowledged definitely yeah and of course um, a big shout out as well through to wheelchair basketball south africa for hosting these events um, during this time period uh, i really truly want to want to also thank that staff as well and although i sit with the dual cap as in wheelchair basketball south africa as well as, as iwbf africa um, you know what it's been a collaboration of everybody including the teams themselves and of course their executives who've been able to make this come, come about. So thank you very much to everybody out there and I really acknowledge and really appreciate all the help that you guys have done. Thank you. All right. Kenya now trying to get some more points on the board. Ra Rahal Alar unable to get the shot up. Good work by the smallest player on the court, Tavirwe Ngoni, and turns the ball over. Uh, Makaniri will have the, the check-in. Yeah, I think the 12-second uh, clock is really and truly affecting the teams at the moment. Uh, not used to playing a 12-second, 24-second, 24-second, 12-second clock uh, in comparison uh, where they had 24 seconds to actually play the ball. Uh, half of that now, 12 seconds, and the game has to be sped up a lot more quicker for them to be able to achieve what they need to achieve. Next up on court, uh, we've got the uh, matchup between uh, the South African men and their neighbours from Namibia. Uh, South Africa, of course, will, will want to keep the momentum going after uh, a, a slow but a slow but yet comfortable win against the Kenyan men uh, in their first encounter. So just uh, just over a minute to play. So those out there that are not aware of the actual rules of the three-on-three -three wheelchair uh, basketball structure, okay, I'm sure that uh, um, Luke explained a lot what was going on. What is most important now is that the players, this is a player-driven game, and what's interesting about that is that the coaches can only talk to the teams after the fact and not during the game. And that makes a big difference because if there's results in the actual ladies on that court, that need to really and truly direct themselves. And so we see a bit of excitement here from a couple of the spectators out there uh, giving instructions and telling everybody what to do. Um, and of course, if the coach gets involved in this, of course, there's a technical foul that uh, is, yeah, I, is expended on the I, game. I think it's important to, to explain, and as you can see, Luke Verhoeven is explaining 
explaining uh, some technicalities to the Kenyan ladies. The, uh, the Kenyan, the Kenyan uh, coach uh, in, the, in the stands is quite animated. It's, uh, it must be extremely frustrating for a coach in this, in this uh, format of the game. Yeah, 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 how can you contain yourself? This is important to everybody. It's, uh, it's a lot of money that's been spent to come here to qualify. And uh, of course, it's so difficult not to, not to shout out instructions to your players. Um, but then again, you know, new format of game. And what's very important about it is that everybody's got to learn the new structures. Technical football called on uh, the Kenyan. Yeah, that was deliberate wasting of game. And what they basically did was there was a, a very poor pass uh, through to their opponents. Uh, Mr. Fukwilson has now seen that the Kenyans are standing up and coaching and going to be talking to them now. Yeah, so on screen at the moment, uh, you can see uh, Luc Fukwilson uh, reprimanding the coaching staff there. Uh, as you alluded to, Charles, they are not allowed to coach. Um, Especially with, they, they're allowed to obviously shout at, the, at their players, but the players are just not allowed to, to acknowledge them. And unfortunately, the, the Kenyan team uh, did not do that. So the coaches have been warned. And uh, again, once they've been warned, the next time they, they get ejected from the stadium. Is that correct? Yeah, that's the problem. And you know what? This is Africa. We are an animated nation. And no matter what people say, what people do, it's not going to be able to stop the enthusiasm for them. This is the way of life. And unfortunately, we've got uh, Mr. Fukuson that's come back again to actually talk to them. And uh, yeah, it's going to be a little bit difficult for everybody to contain themselves and emotions at this time period. All right, well, we're winding down to the end of this game. Uh, South Africa with a very comfortable lead of 12 points to one. And looks like uh, uh, Ken well, Kenya will definitely... Kenya will, uh, will uh, have some work to do to uh, try and uh, uh, knock them over in the next game. Because, of course, if uh, my rights in saying if they don't in South Africa win, that means that uh, they will finish up uh, winning the tournament. Yeah, yeah, it's best of three. Um, irrespective, they'll still play the three games, but yes, most definitely best of three. Uh, they've got to win the next game to remain in the tournament. The last game will make a determination who goes through. So, everything to play for. And um, a lot, lot, lot of mistakes on, on the ground at the moment. Um, yeah, exciting, exciting times. And uh, what can I say? It's, it's finally taken place. Great pass there by Ngoni to find Mokaneri, but she was uh, a bit off balance there. Threw away the position. So can Kenya get one last point on the board as we wind down to the last 10 seconds here? And unfortunately uh, for the Kenyan player there, Zakayo, and Zakayo, she wasn't able to convert, and that will be the end of the game. So South Africa get their first win on this uh, 2021 Commonwealth Games 3 xg wheelchair basketball qualifying uh, tournament, and uh, they will be back to play against Kenya a bit later in what could could be a, uh, a decider. So let's uh, search in for that. Um, thank you very much, uh, Charles. Uh, I'm sure we'll chat again uh, a bit later on. Um, and to the viewers out there, we'll be back shortly with the matchup between South Africa and their uh, neighboring country, Namibia.